Hello again, everyone. It's Jeff Pamela with Open Security. Thanks for joining us for the second episode of RTFM. We're glad you're here. Before we get started with the episode this week, I wanted to share some exciting news with you. The authors of the book from our first review, Red Team Development and Operations, have decided to partner with us to give away some free copies. If you haven't seen the first episode yet, you can check it out here, or there'll be a link in the description too. So give that video a watch first to figure out if it's something that you might be interested in scoring a copy of for either you or a friend. Entering into our competition is going to be simple. Uh, just comment on either that video or this one with a book that you think members of the InfoSec community would benefit greatly from uh, being exposed to and knowing more about. Uh, in doing so, you'll automatically be entered into the drawing, as well as be helping us to identify content that we can talk about here in the future. Another way to enter is you can get an entry for liking either of those videos or subscribing to our channel. Entries will stay open until our next review is published, about a month from now. We'll share inf more information about the winners then. So with this exciting news out of the way, let's talk about our book for May. It's a little IT novel called The Phoenix Project. Have you ever worked in an organization where leadership and management seemed really out of touch with the realities of day-to-day -day operations? Have you been in a place where management would make crazy promises to customers to deliver unrealistic results, ignoring the advice of experts within their own organization? Have you ever been given a deadline that seemed wildly impossible to make and been ignored when trying to establish more realistic timelines? Or do you know anywhere where security isn't just an afterthought, but it's viewed as an active roadblock to getting work done? If so, then have I got a book for you. The Phoenix Project by Gene Kim, Kevin Baer, and George Spafford isn't your traditional information security book. In fact, it isn't an information security book at all. Originally released in 2013, when DevOps was just gaining traction, The Phoenix Project is an IT novel following the experiences of our protagonist, Bill, as he finds himself suddenly transitioning from the role of a lowly IT manager at Parts Unlimited, a manufacturing company, to become vice president of overall IT operations. In his journey, Bill immediately inherits a project doomed to failure, but he's tasked with making it succeed, as both his career and the future of Parts Unlimited will likely be determined by its outcome. The novel at its heart is a management book and an introduction to the DevOps mindset and processes embraced by many organizations around the world. Perhaps more importantly though, it is a book that discusses holistic IT processes and programs, highlights common issues, both technical and procedural, endemic to IT, and focuses on the need to think about our work and responsibilities, not just from our individual perspectives, but to understand the underlying business purposes behind what we do. Since this is a novel, I'm gonna go out of my way to avoid spoilers as much as possible here. So instead of providing a detailed plot summary, I wanna highlight some of the more interesting events that pop up throughout the book, since they directly spoke to or are applicable to us in information security and are incredibly important for us to keep in mind. Remembering that this is a book targeting management, our first introduction to information security in chapter three was both funny and sad, since this really is how we are perceived by some, and in some cases, how information security really can be. Bill describes information security as follows. Information security is always flashing their badges at people and making urgent demands regardless of the consequences to the rest of the organization, which is why we don't invite them to many meetings. The best way to make sure something doesn't get done is to have them in the room. I often can't connect the dots between their shrill, hysterical, and self-righteous demands and actually improving the defensibility of our environment. This sentiment, provided to us from the perspective of our protagonist and VT of, VP of IT operations, highlights the major disconnects and friction that can exist within an organization between those perceived as hindering operations for the sake of security and those so focused on getting things done that security is an active afterthought or avoided. In some organizations, security for too long has been the no hammer. The pattern seen time and time again is that some part of the business wants to make a change or do something new, and in good faith or because of established procedures and processes, security provides a review. And in this review, potential problems or risks are identified and the security representative ultimately says no. I know that I've been in situations where my gut reaction to a proposal or a planned change was, that's crazy and unnecessarily risky. How could we possibly think about doing this? When we just say no, we become a roadblock. In many cases, we're providing our perspective as limited to the technical or system risk analyzed without factoring in a greater understanding of the business need behind the change, or in some cases, 
even an understanding of whether the technical risk posed by um, our identified issue translates to business risk at all. When this happens enough, other members of our organization will simply stop raising concerns to us and ultimately cut us out of the loop entirely, just like Bill says is done at Parts Unlimited. We need to be better. I talk about this when I teach, but as security experts, we need to be relied on to consider the bigger picture, not just technically, but practically. We need to collectively transition from providing no answers to providing yes, but answers, and we need to be realists where possible. Doing so will prevent us from seeing and experiencing what John, the CISO for Parts Unlimited, experienced within his own journey in the Phoenix Project. What I mean when I say this is that when we identify problems, we need to be flexible and creative in our thought processes and always factor in an understanding of the bigger picture. Instead of saying no or it can't be done, we need to go the extra mile and identify whether what we are saying no to is something that the business needs. If it is, we have to weigh the technical risk of compromise or exploitation against the business risk posed by us providing our no answer. And if the change or issue we've identified is something that's truly business critical, we can't say no. We have to work towards a yes but answer. By yes but, what I mean is that when something is truly business critical, we need to investigate and provide additional information as appropriate to ensure that the business's needs can be met while finding a way to mitigate the identified risk sufficiently. So we can say, yes, you can have X, but we will need to ensure the following controls and monitoring are in place to detect Y, where Y is whatever made us initially want to say no to this request. The book has plenty more to say and comment on, on the topics of security and management. Above all this though, the Phoenix Project does a great job of consistently demonstrating how an understanding of processes can allow any team, regardless of size, to significantly grow and mature. The whole book really is a study and love letter to systems thinking and process interactions. In fact, DevOps itself is fundamentally just a framework to overlay the more technical understandings of IT systems and development processes to align with enabling the larger system of the organization to function as efficiently as possible. As information security professionals, many of us are already systems-minded people, though we tend to focus on the technical and not the human element of those systems. The Phoenix Project gives us an opportunity to further this understanding by introducing to us the principles of the three ways. The three ways represent different ways of looking at any system. I'm gonna paraphrase as I discuss these with you, but if you wanna know more, you can start by reading The Phoenix Project or by checking out any of the links or books additionally referenced in this video's description. My discussion of these topics here is gonna come primarily from author Gene Kim's detailed explanation available online. If there are three ways, what are they? The first way emphasizes the performance of the entire system as opposed to the performance of a specific silo of work or a department. We can talk about this at any scale, whether it's as large as the business itself or a business division or as small as the actions of an individual contributor. Specifics for applications of the first way to traditional information security roles would include holistic evaluations of our processes and procedures to identify bottlenecks within our operational systems. Now, when we say operational systems, we don't just mean the technical systems. We mean the overarching machinery of the people, processes, and technology that we use to achieve our goals. Seeking to better understand our roles within the organization and who our customers are, as well as identifying what products or outcomes we provide to these customers, are also outcomes of the first way. All of these objectives and actions seek to allow us to achieve a better overall understanding of the system which in turn can allow us to increase our overall operational effectiveness. The second way is all about feedback loops. Operational understanding needs to feedback into our development processes. For us, the outcomes of our actions, our products to our clients, should inform improvements to our processes. The goals of almost any process improvement initiative is to shorten and amplify feedback loops so necessary corrections can be continually made. Outcomes of the second way include things such as understanding and responding to all customers, internal and external, shortening and amplifying all feedback loops, and embedding knowledge where we can. So a way to think about this in information security terms could be maybe we work for an organization that develops custom web applications. And as part of our standard processes, the developers finished building the web application, and maybe today it is handed over to the security team for security review. That's fine and all, 
But a way that we could shorten the feedback loop might be instead of waiting to get security involved until the end of development, we could do things like have a security champion on the development team or start performing static code analysis as developers push code into their repositories so that security issues can be identified not just at the end of the overall development process, but throughout. The third way is about creating a culture that fosters two things, continual experimentation and an understanding that repetition and practice are prerequisites to mastery. Embracing experimentation allows our organizations and teams to continually improve, even if it means taking risks. And we need mastery of the skills that will help us recover when we experiment too much or push too far. Mastery, specifically in our domain, also ensures that we are up to the task of adequately defending the environments that we are entrusted to protect, adequately being capable of testing them to the degree and uh, measure that we need to be able to. Mastery of our skills ultimately is what allows us to do our job efficiently as well. Outcomes of the third way include allocating time for the improvement of daily work, creating rituals that reward our teams for taking risks, and introducing faults into our systems to increase resilience. I found myself enjoying the Phoenix Project much more than I expected. Between the colorful cast of characters, the O2 accurate problems that they have to deal with, and the broad range of issues addressed in the book, there really wasn't a dull moment. At less than $9 for the digital version, and less than $20 for paperback, this book is hard not to recommend. While it is at its heart a book for managers, there's something in it for everyone. It's surprisingly entertaining and works to broaden our perspective and understanding of how our businesses work. I would give The Phoenix Project five out of five stars and recommend it to anybody who is in management, has to interface with management, or just wants a better understanding of the underlying business processes that drive some of the decisions that we may see as crazy.